Welcome everyone to our workshop on workbooks to promote professional development of undergraduate leaders. Almost all of the people you will see today are students, undergraduate students from the University of Texas at El Paso in El Paso, Texas. You see from the background, the lovely Bhutanese architecture of the buildings on our campus. Today, we will explore, explore how the workbook project has provided financial support essential to the survival of the student-driven, student facilitation, peer-led team learning program at the University of Texas at El Paso. Workbooks give structure to all aspects of learning in this PLTL program. It drives the creative efforts of undergraduates to facilitate learning. And it blossomed into a much wider program to support PLTL practitioners, that's peer-led team learning practitioners, through an international society called the Peer-Led Team Learning International Society. Hello, my name is Edna Tepesano. I have been a peer leader for two years for the first semester of general chemistry at UTEP. My major is cellular and molecular biochemistry, and I will be graduating this May. Hi, my name is Anid Martinez. I have been a peer leader in the second semester general chemistry program at the University of Texas at El Paso for one year. And I am a, currently an undergraduate seeking a second bachelor's of science in microbiology. My name is Jacob Nahera, and I am a peer leader at the University of Texas at El Paso, and I've been peer leading for one year. My degree is biochemistry, and I will be graduating this semester. Development of the model from workshop chemistry to peer-led team learning. In 1999, workshop chemistry started at the City College of the City University of New York. Here, the leading innovation was that students who previously passed the course would then lead the workshops, giving them label peer leaders. In 1994, more institutions adopted the usage of workshop chemistry, creating a national consortium. From these universities, it was found that the most successful workshops all had these six critical components. In 1999 to 2006, we, using grant money from NSF, we wanted to expand into more science, technology, engineering, and mathematics disciplines, as well as two-year colleges. This led to the change from workshop chemistry to peer-led team learning. In 1992 to 2006, we were still supported by the U.S. National Science Foundation, or NSF, who provided us grant funding. Workshops are an integral part of the course. Workshops play an important role in the learning journey of students. It is an effective supplemental tool that reinforces the concepts they learn in lecture. The lecture is a primary portion of a course. Most lecture courses have a large number of students enrolled making it difficult for professors to answer individual questions and clarify doubts developed during lecture or homework. To combat this issue and to ensure academic success, students are expected to attend weekly workshops in which a peer leader guides them through the material they learn in lecture by implementing group activities in which the students discuss concepts, solve problems, and effectively prepares them for lecture and exams. For this reason, it is important for a workshop to be aligned with what is being taught in lecture by the professor. Faculty are closely involved. It is a faculty member's responsibility to ensure that a student's workshop experience is cohesive with lecture material. To accomplish this, it is essential that faculty members are closely involved with their peer leaders. As a peer leader, I meet with the professors twice a week to make sure I understand their expectations for me and the students as well. We plan for the following week's workshop, 
talk about issues with the students, develop activities, and obtain feedback as well. It is a faculty member's job to oversee the peer leaders, and in essence, they both make sure that workshops run smoothly. So the peer leaders are trained prior to each term of the oncoming semester. What a peer leader is, is a student who has successfully passed the course and understood the concepts, and they are trained to be communicative, supportive, and they're typically res very responsible. Peer leaders can be compensated monetarily by credit, but the position is also available on a voluntary status. So peer leaders are really trained to not be an answer giver and to not as an, as, act as an authority. Peer leaders are not professors. We are not going to workshop to lecture on the complex concepts that the faculty is in charge of teaching. The peer leader is really just there to facilitate learning by asking effective questions, implementing different learning theories, and they help their students reflect on the practice that they do um, in their workshop. The workshop materials are challenging. So each workshop is structured around a set of problems or activities that is focused on a specific section in the course, one week at a time. The textbooks used in some of these courses can be very difficult to follow for a student who is trying to learn it for the first time. And so the peer leaders utilize a workbook that they make, that they edit and revise as a team to present really complex information to students in an easier to digest format. Um, the peer leaders regularly meet with the faculty prior to each workshop session to discuss strategies and how best to communicate certain material. During this time, the peer leaders also provide feedback on the understanding of the students from the workshops to the faculty. Organizational arrangements are optimized. Time and space are important considerations. Workshop sessions need a space conducive to small group discussions. Although this year, space was not so much an issue as workshops were conducted online at UTEP. Sessions must be scheduled in advance. Ideally, a workshop is two hours long with variability from 45 to 120 minutes, at least once a week with six to eight students with some variability of four to 24 students and must be mandatory as a part of the course grade. There is institutional support. The PLTL model can be successfully institutionalized when administrators provide logistical, evaluative, and financial support, recognize and reward innovative and effective teaching, as well as connect the PLTL program with the institution's goals and strategic plans. So the reason why we do peer-led team learning at UTEP is provided by the data that you see on the screen where you're looking at performance of students in the course uh, as a percentage of students that received grades of A or B or C in first semester general chemistry at UTEP from about 1989 until 2013. We started peer-led team learning in 2000. So you can see that prior to this date, students received grades of A, B, or C a little more than 50% of the time. They, the denominator is the number of students enrolled in the course at the beginning of the course. After 2000, the rate in, improved into the 60s and 70s uh, percentages. After 2000, you can see that 
students did far better in terms of performance uh, in the course. What you see displayed here are the covers for workbooks since about 2014. The covers are designed by the peer leaders and the content is now written almost exclusively and entirely by undergraduate students who have done well as peer leaders and understand the content and can explain the concepts to the students taking the course. So now the, the workbooks were originally written by faculty members, myself and several other of the professors that taught first and second semester general chemistry. Now the content is written almost in exclusively by the undergraduate leaders themselves. Hey, what's up peer leaders? Welcome to Training for Fall 2020. My name is Annie Martinez and I hope y'all enjoy this video we put together just for you. Hi, my name is Priscilla Parada and I'm a senior majoring in biological sciences, but more importantly, I'm a peer leader just like you. And today I want to talk about one of the most important concepts is, ta-da, the workbook! So this is actually our newest fall 2020 edition. And so this book not only serves as a guide for both students and peer leaders about the concepts that we're going to learn in Chem 1306, but more importantly, it actually just encompasses all the hard work that peer leaders have done. Hello everyone, my name is Dania de la Hoya and last semester with Priscilla Parada, I was one of the peer leaders who was in charge of developing this beautiful workshop. So what is a workbook and why is it important to form part of the committee who is in charge of editing, developing and modifying the problems? Well, as you all know, right, because we all were students from Chem uh, 1306, the workbook is an essential tool for students because it has problems, place to take notes, and pretty much a summary of everything you're going to see throughout the semester. And because it's made by students, like you and me, right, by you being part of the committee, you help modify these problems and actually prevent some things to happen in future semesters and improve the workbook, as well as you help to actually develop this. Here's an example of a single problem from the second semester General Chemistry by Exploration Fall 2020 workbook. Now, even if you are not a chemist, just by looking at the way this problem is printed, you can begin to identify errors in style, formatting, consistency, etc. Here we have highlighted some of the errors found in just this single problem. First, everything in yellow are subscripts and superscripts that are a font that's much too small to be legible. The numbers in red are actually a completely different font from everything else on this problem. Highlighted in a bright green, you can see the same style of X for two different uh, mathematical functions. In a bright turquoise, you can see e to the power of ln that for some reason has been struck out. And finally, in the dark teal, you see an EC arrow composed of a little dash and a greater than sign. Instead of using like an insertable arrow symbol from Microsoft Word, so this is a final edited version where you see that font size and style are consistent throughout the problem. There is a distinction between the multiplication problem and the scientific notation. And this textbook arrow looks much more professional than the previous arrow. What we did pretty much was recollecting and uh, organizing everything that was done for the workbook, right? So we had a committee and we were in charge of organizing how modules were divided, how things will turn in. And once everything was done, we put everything together, organized the visuals, and then we finally have oh, the final workbook. It still has some problems, obviously. A lot of it was changed. And that's why we really think you guys should be part of this new committee with great people such as Paola and Anit, who's gonna help you to actually 
uh, create this and modify and improve this new workbook. Oh, I feel transformed after that awesome intro. Thanks, Sonia. So I was also part of the committee last semester and I didn't think I would like it as much as I did when I first signed up, but apparently I couldn't get enough of it because here I am back with Paola and we have a lot of killer ideas. Hi, my name is Paola Garcia and I'm a biology major here at UTEP. So I joined the workbook revisions committee because when taking general chemistry two or during my first semesters of peer leading, I noticed some problems or some wording in the workbook that was confusing or didn't make sense. And that's why the committee was formed. And every week we get together to make those changes in the workbook or to make it more understandable. And if you join the committee, you're gonna have that opportunity. You're gonna have the opportunity to make the workbook better and to make the changes that bothered you maybe when you took the class. Thanks, Paola. No, don't take it just from us. I know that everybody had a really good time and learned a lot from our experiences last semester. Hi guys, first of all, welcome. Uh, my name is Azul and I've been part of the Workbook Revisions since Spring 2020 and I'm really happy I joined. The reason being it's because I realized this was an opportunity for us to make slightly changes on the workbook that may impact how students are understanding the material. So let's say we have a student who doesn't like chemistry at all because he finds it somehow difficult. So what if we presented the information in an easier and funnier way than other books? So maybe he might even like chemistry. So that's what we're doing. And I think that's pretty cool. Hello, my name is Jacob Nahara and I am a second semester peer leader majoring in biochemistry. I chose to be part of the workbook revision team. So it's our duty as peer leaders that the students are well equipped with the necessary tools to not only pass but excel in Chem 1306 course. Hello, this is Christian Valencia. I was part of the workbook revisions committee. What I learned about this committee is that it was an opportunity to help improve uh, by editing and revising the workbook for the student and giving them more sources for them to succeed in the course. Hey, my name is Desiree Nieto and I did revisions for module 13 of the peer leader workbook during the spring 2020 semester. It was overall a nice experience and I was able to not only work on that specific module but I was also able to input other ideas for the rest of the book as well. The time I spent helping to improve the workbook was definitely worth it, and I learned a lot from my peers. Well said, everyone. We work hard and we have fun so that we can enjoy the many benefits that this job has to offer. A lot of things were changed, and a lot of things can be changed still. So you were students, and now you are going to experience this workbook as peer leaders and how your students react to them. So you can tell, oh, I noticed this doesn't work or I noticed this works really well. So you can actually implement things and modify the upcoming workbook. And at the end of it, you're going to have your name published in an actual workbook, a thing that you can show people and see, hey, I did this page. Do you see that? I actually created that. And I'm like, whoa, that's impressive. It's something you created with the help of your peers, which is, boom, mind blowing for me. I really hope you guys form part of this committee because it's something that I'm really fond of. So I really, really hope you form part of it. I think these are some really great benefits. For instance, one of the peer leaders actually took a workbook to their interview. Um, so that's something that you can do too, right? You put hard work into this and, you know, it's really going to pay off and people are going to be surprised that you're working on something big like this. There are invaluable experiences to be made within this group, whether it be skills in writing or leadership amongst the friends you meet. I hope to see you in the team, and I am excited to create an amazing workbook with you. And ever since I joined, I felt a stronger sense of belonging. Maybe it was because I spent more time with other peer leaders and got to know them better. But I think the most important part of our job is the impact that we get to have on all the students taking chemistry in semesters to come. Because the work that we do today can help a student many years from now taking the same class. So I really hope all of you join us this semester in the workbook revisions. And with that, I hope that y'all are as excited as we are to get the ball rolling on next semester's workbook to make it the best version yet. See you there. So the income derived from the sale of workbooks at the bookstore, at the university bookstore, leads to a small profit. And that profit is overseen by 
a nonprofit organization called Lead for America Corporation. The income is displayed as the black bars in this graph. And the blue bars show the amount that is donated each year to a gift fund at the university. S student incomes, peer leader incomes are enabled by these donations to the university. Now you see toward the end, some sh short red bars. Those are donations made to a sister institution, the University of Texas of the Permian Basin, because one of the peer leaders from 2001 took a position as a chemistry professor at UT Permian Basin, and she is now head of the department. And so some of the income for their program is generated from the sale of workbooks. You can see displayed the fact that $600,000, that would be about 500,000 British pounds sterling have been generated to support student facilitated learning by this process over the last eight years. The peer leading program in chemistry here at UTEP is a program that is a, it's a mandatory component of the general chemistry courses where students are required to register for a workshop um, and they attend the workshop weekly for two hours and it's run by a peer leader who is their peer, so another undergraduate student, um, where they engage in group activities to sort of facilitate the learning of really challenging concepts in general chemistry. So some of the things we have to do as a peer leader is conduct a two-hour workshop once a week. Some of us have one workshop, some have two. And during workshop, we work with our students and we propose topics to get them talking about the material that they learn in chemistry. Um, our main responsibility is just to get them working on the material, practicing the material, and keeping that discussion going. The way that we interact with the students is we basically go into a workshop setting. There's 12 to 15 students and what we do is we mentor them. We're supposed to be their peers, so they're supposed to be able to approach us and talk to us whenever they need anything. The program challenges the conventional sort of education methods where like I'm the teacher and I'm going to teach you something. Um, it's more of a program where uh, I facilitate learning, so I encourage group activities, I encourage students to interact with each other um, so that they can learn how to master those concepts in chemistry and not just hear it from one person. What I consider my primary responsibility as a peer leader is to create that comfortable learning environment. I think one of the main things that I gain from being a peer leader is confidence. Um, I'm a lot better at talking to people and also working with each other since you work with so many students. You work with about 30 of your own students, but you also see countless number of students during office hours and during lecture. Being a peer leader is very beneficial because you actually get to network a lot with different professors. You actually get to meet other students who are also trying to pursue basically the same dreams that you are. It also helps with developing your leadership skills and your social skills. I think the main academic benefit that I got was time management. Uh, since I started as a freshman, I've really learned how to manage my time from working, being a peer leader, and being a student. And now that I'm a senior, I can see that. Um, it taught me how to study, looking at my students. Uh, in order for me to help them, I try to think of better ways to study and how to manage your time more efficiently. And I've also learned to work together as a microbiology major. We do a lot of group projects, especially for lab, and I've learned to work with the group and kind of take lead. The academic benefits of, of being a peer leader have obviously been that I've, I've built my skills in, in chemistry. Um, so oftentimes like I'll encounter a concept that maybe I didn't master so well while I was a student in the general chemistry course. And then when I find that I'm you know, planning activities for workshop that I realize that, oh, I have to master this even further than what I did when I was a student. And then that of course carries on to my other, to my other courses to like sort of apply those critical thinking skills. I just applied to medical school this past summer and I would definitely say that peer leading helped me get into medical school. During my interviews, I know a lot of the interviewers were really interested on what I did 
and they're really surprised at all the things that we do. The peer leading program is really, really great for professional development. I think it offers uh, peer leaders a lot of valuable skills, um, such as how to interact with other people. Those are the skills that a peer leader is really taught, is how do you navigate the experiences of different people and how do you best get to them um, in order to improve their learning or to improve them, them as individuals. And I think that's a really important aspect of being a peer leader.